Failure is cheap. It's the best thing you're going to hear all day. Woo, here we go. Failure is cheap. I can say it louder now. Uh, this might be a little surprising for this audience because we're in the space industry and, and everybody knows that it's expensive. Uh, we've definitely been taught that over time. This is, this is the industry that bought us you know, $10,000 or $100,000 per pound cost of launch to orbit. This is not an industry where failure is typically cheap. Rick and, and many people will remember Jerry O'Neill and that great vision that uh, Jerry put out of people living and working in space. And it was going to pay through space-based solar power stations. We're going to have massive rotating space stations. L5 by 95, anyone remember? What happened? The space shuttle promised $100 per pound to orbit. And then one blew up. And we lost seven astronauts. And we lost $100 to pound to orbit. One failure. This is an industry with a history of failure being very expensive. The result of that was that Jerry's vision has been on hold. And we're all still waiting. This industry is now bringing us SLS. I'll let Rick take the acronyms. It's brought us James Webb is at about $20 billion now. It's got us some great successes. When you spend a lot of money, you would really want a success, right? We have a space station in orbit. Cost about $200 billion. It's not an industry where you can usually say that failure is cheap. But we need failure to be cheap. We need a new paradigm. If we look back 100 years, the Wright brothers started in, was it 1896? They started trying to, to fly an aircraft, and they failed. They tried again in 1897, 1898, 1899. There's a trend here. 1900, 1901. They failed so much in 1902, Wilbur Wright said, man will not fly for 50 years. And in 1903, they flew. That was a couple of guys that worked in a bicycle repair shop, and they flew the first controlled flight, and that brought on a new industry. Back in that same era, Thomas Edison said, I do not see 10,000 failures. I have not failed 10,000 times. I have successfully found 10,000 ways that it will not work. Failure was cheap. You could fail 10,000 times. That is what we need right now. And that is what we're about to get. With new launch systems, with the drop in launch cost, Rick showed the, the video of Starship. Starship is not the only launch company that's bringing down the cost of access to space. There are new business models where you can ride share that launch vehicle, where you can pay as a service to get to space, where you can actually do things on small amounts of money and try them in space and reduce the cost of failure. Because what we need is for failure to be cheap. There are other things that are happening in space as well that are equally as exciting because they reduce the cost of failure. One of those things very dear to my heart, satellite servicing. If you can repair a spacecraft, you can reduce the cost of failure. If you can upgrade a spacecraft, you can reduce the cost of failure. If you can run an experiment hosted on someone else's spacecraft, without even having to launch the spacecraft, you can reduce the cost of failure. This is the most exciting thing that is happening right now in the space industry. My company, Orbit Fab, we're building the first gas stations in space. The reason we are doing this is because we want to reduce the cost of failure. We want to create a bustling space economy that can support human jobs uh, in space, permanent jobs in space. You can't have a bustling economy if you don't have fuel. You can't have a bustling economy if you don't have innovation. You can't have a bustling economy if the cost of failure is too high. We need that new paradigm. We need to be able to repair satellites, upgrade satellites, refuel satellites, make modular satellites, bolt satellites together in orbit, manufacture satellites in orbit, try things out quickly, scale them quickly. 
This is why VC is starting to come into the space industry, is because you can do things on VC level dollars, not government mega project dollars. And you can try them and you can fail. And VCs know this. 90% of the companies they invest in will fail. A few percent of those companies will become multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar corporations. Possibly in the future we'll be starting to talk about the trillion dollar companies. That's the future of the space industry. That money is coming in because the cost of failure is reduced. You can try and fall on your face and keep going, and failure is not the death of your company or the death of your project. You need to design the way that you look at things around making sure that failure is cheap. So that really, I think, is the key to where the industry is going. It's what so many people are building. And I'd like to encourage everybody in this room to think about that in how they approach their projects, how they approach their companies, how they approach looking at the space industry and what they're promoting. We cannot afford massive mega projects that can't afford to fail. Because if they can't afford to fail, then you end up in this cycle. And this is a cycle that the space industry has been in. You have one launch, you need to put everything on that launch because there may not be another launch for a long time. The more you put on that launch, the more expensive it gets. We'd better really test it. The more you have to test it, the more reliable it has to be, the more it costs, the less launches there are, the more you put onto that launch, the more complex it gets, the more it costs to test it. This is a vicious cycle that has been killing the space industry. The flip side of that is being able to do one thing and test it and fail and try it again with a bit of a difference and try it again and try it again and try it again. Can we host those on payloads in space? Can we put them up more cheaply? Can we build them with microelectronics much more small? That's where we need to get away from the vicious cycle into a virtuous cycle of going faster, failing more often, embracing failure, and learning. Now, there are a lot of things we have to take into account on this. Space is a tricky place. People say space is hard. I'm not sure space is harder than doing things on Earth. But it's definitely something we've done less and we've failed less. We are millions of failures behind in terms of operating in space compared to operating on the ground. We just had a lot more experience failing and knowing what doesn't work. So we need to, we need to make those changes. We need to be able to, to operate in space. The first time that we have a permanent job in space, the first person who is employed in space and told, don't come home, don't come home, don't come back, have a new home, settle space, this is your home, we are paying you to take a permanent job to roll out the carpet for the tourists to set up the cameras and the lighting for shooting a movie, to help organize and, uh, and film uh, the first sports games in space. Whatever that first job is in space for a human, when they live in space, they're going to pay a lot of attention to fixing the toilets because toilets are always terrible in space. They're going to pay a lot of attention to just learning how to operate, and they'll spend their time working with things because failure for them will be a lot a lot cheaper. Once we have people actually living in space, we will go through another complete paradigm shift on the cost of failure and the velocity with which we will learn and the experience that we will gain. Those people are going to invent things that nobody has thought about before. Now, there may be a benchmark cost to somebody living in space. That cost is dropping. Once you have a person living in space, the cost for them to do things there drops dramatically, especially if it's home, if they believe they're staying there and they're incentivized to work on those things. Everything we're seeing are these trends to reduce the cost of failure. So I leave you with that. Failure is cheap. This is where the space industry is going. These are the things that, that we're doing in this industry. In this room, it should be one of the things we are most excited about. Failure is cheap.